Hello everyone, my name is Jonas Persson and I'm the CTO of Comsys. Today we're going to have a short seminar or video about uh, harmonics, how they spread um, and why they are harmful to other loads in the facility. So uh, we will imagine an industrial context where we have a three-phase load. Um, a typical load will be a non-linear load. A non-linear load is a load that is creating harmonics because when you apply a sine voltage to it, it will draw a non-sinusoidal current. Um, and the typical load in an industrial setting today would be a variable frequency drive or um, a light system or any semiconductor load. Actually, even your uh, laptop is a semiconductor load that will pull uh, harmonics from the grid. In the past, you could often hear that harmonics were not harmful because the load is designed to pull the harmonics because it has a rectifier inside it. Uh, but this is not true and in this video I will tell you why. Uh, so consider a picture here. We have a transformer and a load. It's a very simple uh, diagram. Um, the transformer is feeding your load and the load is producing harmonics. The harmonic orders, if we have a three-phase load, will be the 5, 7, 11, 13 and so forth. The six pulse harmonics, uh, which you can say are equivalent to uh, six times n plus minus one. So for the six plus minus one, we get five and seven. Six times two plus minus one, we get 11 and 13 and so forth. Now we can replace the transformer with a Thevenin equivalent, uh, with a simple electrical model that will explain how the harmonics are actually affecting the voltage. So now consider uh, the second picture uh, where we have a, an ideal voltage source on the top. Uh, we have an inductor and we have a resistance. Uh, these two components will model the source impedance of the grid. Uh, now the load will pull a current through those um, impedances. Uh, it will be... Um, uh, the, we will consider the, the fundamental current, that would be uh, 50 Hz or 60 Hz. Uh, we will consider the 5th and the 7th harmonic. So in the third picture you will now see a waveform. Uh, first we have uh, the fundamental, uh, the 5th and then the 7th harmonic. And in the second variation of the picture you will see uh, the complex waveform, the sum of these harmonics and the fundamental current. Uh, now if we go back to the source model and the load, we will see that uh, we have a voltage drop. Um, we have a voltage drop over the inductor and over the resistor. And this voltage drop is actually what is creating the problem. Because if we are now looking at the point Vg, uh, the voltage that is created in the grid at your at the second area of the transformer or your incoming feeder to your facility, or the, the outlet in the wall, something like that, you will see that since we have a voltage drop over the resistance and the inductor, we will actually have a distorted voltage. So now consider that we are adding a linear load, a load that would normally not produce harmonics, a load that would not normally be affected by harmonics. Uh, so in the fourth uh, uh, picture, let's consider a light bulb. We're adding a light bulb to our system next to the variable frequency drive. Um, we can model this light bulb as a resistance. So it's a simple resistor uh, that we put in parallel with the variable frequency drive. Now, since the current that will flow to the resistor is equal to U divided by R, Ohm's law, we can see that if we have a distorted voltage, we will also have a distorted current going in the light bulb. So what this means in simple terms is that if you have, if you have a, a nonlinear load, uh, you will see that the voltage will actually be distorted by the nonlinear load. This distorted voltage will drive current to other loads in your facility. Uh, we can also see, if we go back to the Thevenin equivalent, that if I make the current bigger, I'm, I'm, I'm adding a larger variable frequency drive or a drive with a smaller line choke, so we have higher harmonics, we will of course see a higher voltage harmonic. 
In the same sense, if we have a weaker grid, it means that the source impedance, the inductance and the resistance, will be higher. And this will also mean that the voltage distortion components will be higher. And this is the reason why, if you look in a standard like IEEE 519, why we have a relation between the maximum allowed TDD, the total demand distortion, and the re relation between the load size on one hand and the grid strength on the other hand. And that relation is called the relation between uh, the demand current and the uh, short circuit current of the grid. And this simple relation is modeling what we see in the model that when when we have a weaker grid or we have a larger load, we will actually get larger voltage distortion on the grid. With this basic understanding, we now have a model that we can apply to a larger grid and we can understand how harmonics are spreading, how they are moving from one facility to another or from one load to another, which is in our model the same thing. So uh, consider a picture of a larger grid. Uh, we now have several loads, several transformers that are exactly the same as in the previous example. We have a large feeding transformer, which is where, where uh, we have the supply going to this part of the grid that we're looking at. We have smaller transformers going down to variable frequency drives. All of these are now producing harmonic current. So we can apply the same grid equivalent to this. In, in the next picture, we have replaced all the transformers with, with the source impedance pairs. So the grid is now an ideal voltage source. And we have several pairs of resistances and inductances that are actually causing a voltage drop depending on how much current is going through them. And if you look, in, look into this model and you consider the leftmost uh, load, you will see that if we add current here, we will add the voltage drop not only locally in that load on the local source impedance, but we will also have a voltage drop that is caused in the top source impedance. And of course, this means that the rightmost drive, the rightmost load, is also seeing the distorted voltage that is being created by the leftmost one. So it means, in total, the voltage we get is the sum of all the impedances and all the loads together, and, and they are all contributing to, um, to higher harmonics. And this basic model on, on how current is spreading, we, we now made a, a last picture of that where we see that harmonics can actually go from one part of the facility to another part. It applies for everything in the grid. So it applies if you have a small building, uh, you have a lot of power supplies for your computers, and you actually get a distorted current to the light bulbs in the restroom. It applies for a large industry, but it also applies between different buildings, and it applies on entire parts of the electrical grid. So that was a very quick explanation on how harmonics are spreading. Uh, the model we presented here is very, very simple, but it's also valid to explain why we have a model like we have in IEEE 519, because the, the basic mechanism, how the harmonics are spreading, um, is actually this simple. And it's actually mitigated by, by the regulations you see in IEEE 519 and in other similar standards. Thank you for watching.